In this video, we're going to learn about while loops in C++. So while loops are a control structure that allow us to repeat the execution of a block of statements multiple times. So for example, we could declare a variable int i, and we could initialize i to one. Now let's say that I want to output i and increment it by one, five times. So for example, I'll have c out i followed by an inline. Then I'll increment i by one. Now, if I wanted to do this four more times, I could copy and paste these statements here. So I'll paste it and then again, and then again, and then again. And if I save, compile, and run the program, I'm going to get i printed out five times. And we can see that we get one, two, three, four, five here. So our program is working, but we have all this repeated code here because we want to do something five times. We could use a while loop to remove this code duplication. So a while loop will execute a block of statements so long as some condition is true. So for example, we could delete all of these and then up here, we'll make a while loop. We'll have while, and then in these brackets is where we put the condition. We'll have the condition i is less than or equal to five. Then we're gonna wrap these statements in these brackets here. So this here is called a block, and this block is the body of this while loop. It's the statements that the while loop is going to execute each time. This condition is going to determine whether or not this block of statements continues to execute. If this condition is true, this block of statements will execute. If the condition is false, this block of statements will not execute, and execution will actually jump down here. We could put a C out here just to recognize that. We'll have C out while loop done followed by an end line. So let's save, compile, and run our program. And we get one, two, three, four, five output the exact same as before. We also get this while loop done here. So what's going on is that I is initially set to one. So the first time this condition is checked, one is less than or equal to five. So this condition is true. That means that the loop body here is going to execute and we're going to output one. Then I gets incremented by one and I is set to two. Then this condition will be checked again. Two is less than or equal to five. So again, the condition is true. That means this body of statements is going to execute. We output two, we then increment I by one and I is now going to be three. We check the condition again. Three is still less than or equal to five. So then we output three, increment i by one. So i is now four. Four is less than or equal to five. We output four. We increment i by one. i is now five. Five is still less than or equal to five. So we output five and then increment i by one. i is now six. So the next time this condition is checked, six is not less than or equal to five. So this condition is false. That is when the while loop is going to stop. And at that point, execution is going to jump down here to the next statement after the while loop. And we output while loop done. So that's how our code is working. If we save, compile, and run it again, we can see one, two, three, four, five are output here. And that process that we just went through is how those numbers are being output. The loop body is executing so long as that condition is true. Now with the while loop, it's possible that the condition is never true and the body of the while loop is never executed. So for example, if we initialized i to 10, then this condition will not be true. 10 is not less than or equal to five. So this body will never execute in this case. If we save, compile, and run our program, all we get is while loop done. And that's because after this condition is false, execution is going to jump down here and that's it. Our loop body never executes. There are different kinds of loops in C++, including one type called a do while loop that guarantees that the loop body will execute at least once. Here, when we have i set to one and we check if i is less than or equal to five and we increment i by one with each loop iteration, we're using i as what's called a counter variable because i is helping us to count how many times this loop is going to execute. 
this pattern of initializing a variable to some value, checking some condition related to that variable, and then modifying the variable is so common to loops that another kind of loop called the for loop exists that allows us to put all this information on one line. Now it's possible to have a loop that never stops. We call a loop like that an infinite loop. And usually an infinite loop occurs due to a programming error. So for example, here we initialize i to one, and then we check if i is less than or equal to five. Now we know that eventually i is gonna reach six and the loop is going to stop because here we increment i. If we forgot to put this in though, i would never reach six because we no longer increment it with each iteration of the loop. So we can save, compile, and run the program. And now we'll just get one forever. Our program may actually crash due to this. So because I'm using Xcode on a Mac, I'm gonna click on this pause button here to stop the execution of the program. Then I'm going to go up here to find my source code file so we can fix this bug. So I could put i is equal to i plus one here to fix this bug. And then if we save, compile, and run the program, now it's going to be working again because we no longer have an infinite loop. Eventually our condition is false and our loop is going to stop executing. Now there's a keyword called break that we can use to stop the execution of the loop, even in the middle of the loop body. So for example, if here I had if i is equal to two, break. What's going to happen is if i is equal to two, the keyword break is going to cause the execution of the loop body to stop right there. And execution is going to resume down here. So if we save, compile, and run this version of the program, we're going to get one, two, and then while loop done. And so what's happening here is that i is initialized to one, one is less than or equal to five. So we output i, one. We check if i is equal to two. It's not, so we don't break. We increment i by one, i is now two. Two is still going to be less than or equal to five. So the loop body is going to execute again. We output two. This time though, i is equal to two. So we break and execution is going to jump down here and the loop is done. So that's how we can use break to stop a loop early. There's another keyword called continue that we can use to skip over executing the remainder of the loop body. So here, if we check that i is equal to two, instead of using break, we'll have a body for this if statement here and we'll increment i by two. Then we'll have continue. So what's going to happen here is when i is equal to two, i is going to be incremented by two then we're going to use continue. Continue is going to skip over the remainder of the loop body. Execution will actually go up here. The condition is going to be checked, and if it's true, the loop body is going to execute again. But because we use continue here, when i is equal to two, we're not gonna run the statement here because the remainder of the loop body is going to be skipped over. Let's see the effect of this. We'll save, compile, and run the program. And now we get one, two, four, and five. So again, what's happening is when i is two, we're gonna increment i by two. So i is now four. We then use continue here to skip over this. So i is not incremented by one. i is actually going to be four when this is checked. Four is less than or equal to five. We output four i is not equal to two, so i is going to be incremented by one. Then i is going to be five. Five is still less than or equal to five, so we output i. i is going to be incremented by one. i is now six, and six is not less than or equal to five, so that's when the loop is going to stop. So continue can be used to skip over the remainder of the loop body. Sometimes using break and continue can make our code more difficult to understand. So we should be a little bit careful about how and when we use them. We don't always have to have a counter variable that's going to help us execute our loop some predetermined amount of times. We can also have what's called an indefinite loop 
that's going to execute an indefinite amount of times. So for example, we could create a loop that's going to execute until the user enters some particular value. Maybe we could create a loop that continually asks the user for positive integers, and the loop will produce a sum of all those positive integers. We could have the loop stop when the user enters in negative one. So let's actually get rid of this code here, and we'll create a variable called sum. And sum is going to store the sum of the positive integers that the user enters. So we'll initialize sum to zero because initially the user hasn't entered in any numbers. We'll declare another variable called number to store the numbers that the user enters. And again, we'll initialize it to zero. Now we're going to have a loop that's going to execute so long as number is not negative one. In other words, so long as the user has not entered in the value negative one. So we'll have while number doesn't equal negative one. So for our loop body, we'll first prompt the user to enter in a number. So we'll have enter positive integer or negative one to quit to prompt the user. We'll take the number that the user enters and we'll store it into the number variable. Now, if the number isn't negative one, then we want to add the number to the sum. So if the number doesn't equal negative one, we're going to take the number and we're going to add it to the sum with sum is equal to sum plus number. Now, eventually when the user does enter in negative one, the loop is going to stop because this condition is no longer going to be true. It's going to be false. So what's special about this loop is that it's going to execute some unknown number of times. The user could enter in 10 positive integers or the user could enter in 10,000. Down here, we could output the sum. So we'll have sum colon, and then we'll output the sum here. So we can save, compile, and run this program. And we'll enter in two and four and three, and then we'll enter in negative one. And we get a sum of nine, which is correct because two plus four plus three gives us nine. So again, we can run the program, and this time we'll enter in two, 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 and then we'll have negative one, and we get a sum of 10. And this time, the loop body executed six times. So the exact amount of times the loop is going to execute is indefinite. It's not known at the time the loop is entered, and that's called an indefinite loop. So we could use the break keyword to introduce some error handling into this program. Right now, we request that the user enters in a positive integer or negative one to quit. And if the number doesn't equal negative one, we add it to the sum. But what if the user entered in zero or negative 10? Those numbers are not positive integers, but we have no check for that. So we could add a check for that. And if the user entered in an invalid value like that, we could actually stop the loop. So we could have here, if the number is less than or equal to zero, and the number is not negative one, we have a problem because they've entered in an invalid number. So what we could do is output an error message. We could have number must be a positive integer followed by an end line. And then we could use break to stop the loop. So now if we save, compile, and run the program, we could enter in two and then four, but then if we enter in negative 10, the loop is going to stop executing and we get this error message, number must be a positive integer. So that's how we could use break to help structure our loop. So this is how we can use while loops in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.